in honor of the 65th anniversary of Tecundawide Cottages, we'd like to share our history with you. In 1954, my parents, Alger and Jane Mason, bought a beautiful piece of land on the east shore of Lake George in a small hamlet called Cleverdale. It actually started about 120 years ago when my grandfather, Howard Mason, first came to Cleverdale. Long before Howard arrived, Cleverdale was an island of grasslands known as Grassy Point. The name was changed to Ripley's Point in honor of James Ripley, one of the first settlers. It was prime land for farming because of its long growing season. A semi-floating bridge connected the point to the mainland. Due to its natural beauty, the land soon became valued for more than just its farmland. Although the center of the island remained pastures, by the 1880s, summer cottages, lodges, inns and hotels lined the path that followed the shore around the point. Howard first came to Ripley's Point with 17 Quakers in August of 1901. They stayed for two weeks and paid $25. The Lake George steamboats brought mail to the community in the summer, but there was no winter mail service. When the residents tried to establish a post office, there was a problem. There already was a Ripley, New York. A local reading the book, The Cleverdale Mystery, suggested changing the name from Ripley's Point to Cleverdale. But Howard later recalled, The name Cleverdale to me seems meaningless, and I wish it would be changed back to Ripley's Point in honor of its first settler. Howard bought land in 1907 and resold it as lots. He put in a water system and built an ice house. Howard cut ice on the lake and supplied it to all the cottages for miles around. He built a dance hall called the Sans Souci. The first building burned in the 1980s, but it was rebuilt and is now just south of its original location. Eventually, the shore path was moved to the center of Cleverdale and wooden plank sidewalks were added. Howard bid on the contract to carry the mail all year from Glens Falls to Cleverdale. It said, Any attempt to use a motor vehicle during the winter would be considered bad faith. If it was impossible to get through with horses, the carrier must resort to snowshoes. The road was paved in the 1930s. That's when the state also put in a road spanning the marsh, changing Cleverdale from an island to a peninsula its popularity as a recreation area grew. Howard leased property to Arthur Mead in 1912. Arthur opened Mead's store and ice cream parlor and operated it for over 50 years. After World War II, Howard's son Alger married Arthur's daughter Jane. Jane and Alger bought a house in Cleverdale and started their family. Alger built houses and docks. Together they owned Algersey Mason Cottages, later known as Mason's Cottages. Many of those cottages still line Cleverdale Road today. Jane and Alger purchased 21 acres of land on the southwest shore of Cleverdale. The land was owned by Hilda Smith, but it was once part of the Brayton family farms. There, they wanted to create a deluxe cottage colony where families could come to their home away from home. They named it Tecundawide. 
Everyone asks us how they picked the name Tecundawide. My mother said that the name came from Holden's history of the town of Queensbury, which said Tecundawide was the Indian name of Harris's Bay on Lake George, as shown on a map dated 1776. The papers of Sir William Johnson, Superintendent for Indian Affairs for the Six Nations, also included a map with trail from the Hudson River to Tecundawide. The name is believed to be Iroquoian in the Akwesasne dialect, roughly meaning from the place of power and peace. Their idea was to build two bedroom cottages with knotty pine interiors, measuring almost 800 square feet. The first brochure described maple furniture, a fireplace, and a modern electric kitchen. Each white clapboard cottage was adorned with new hemlock green shutters with pine tree cutouts and a tea on the exterior chimney. Years later, we used the pine tree cutout for our logo. Our signs and our annual golf tournament trophy still use the signature tea. Jane and Alger built cottages one, two, and three the first year. When they bought the land, a one-bedroom cottage was where cottage number five stands today. In 1954, it was called cottage number four. The next year, Jane and Alger sold 100 feet of lakefront on the south end of the property. With the proceeds, they built cottages number five, six, seven, and eight. Alger built the first boathouse and dock in 1956 and the following year added the second boathouse and dock, as well as three more cottages. By 1959, the center of the property was complete with 15 cottages. Alter and Jane donated land to the town of Queensbury to create a road on the north boundary of Tecundawide. The town named this road Hillman Road when they paved it. At the same time, the town renamed what was known as the back road in Cleverdale, Mason Road, after Howard Mason. Tecundawide was incorporated in 1961. Jane and Alger began building a larger home. Their family of six sons and a daughter moved to Tecundawide in 1962. The following year, Alger built cottages number 16 and 17. And three years later, they added three more cottages, now 20 in total. One bedroom cottage that they purchased with the land was rebuilt as a two bedroom cottage, and cottages number four and five were renumbered. The same year, they also built three new cottages. A neighbor donated the swing and the slide that still stand in the center of the property. There were now 23 cottages. Six were rented on a seasonal basis, and the rest were split rentals. Jane's and Alger's son John and his wife Stephanie began working for Tecundawide Incorporated in 1971. During the winter, they built cottages number 24, 25, and 26. By the summer of 1972, seasonal rentals nearly doubled. Jane and Alger sold Mason's cottages in 1974. Cottage number 27 was built three years later, and tennis courts were added to the property. John and another son, Jim, purchased the contracting business from Tecundawide and named it Sons of Al. Jane's and Alger's youngest son, Bill, married Lynn in September of 1978. We moved into my parents' home and worked for Sons of Al and Tecundawide, handling the day-to-day -day management of the cottages. Forty years later, we are still here. A laundromat and shed was built during the 80s. Bill and Lynn donated a second playground and placed it near that building. Summer events included movie nights, kids parties, cocktail parties, a square dance and barbecue, tennis and golf tournaments, and fireworks. One summer, Tecundawide offered breakfast in the basement, and one winter, there was a community skating party and bonfire on the ice. Alger built the last four cottages in 1982. 
By then, more than half were seasonal rentals, and Alter and Jane began to consider changing Tecundawide into a homeowners association. By December of 1984, the Declaration of Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions was written. It was recorded in Warren County in March of 1985. Tecundawide was dissolved and Tecundawide Homeowners Association was formed. Other associations began popping up around the lake. One newspaper dubbed it Condo Mania. The homeowners' first meeting was held on August 2, 1985. All the members were present, Alger, Jane, and their seven children. At that meeting, they decided that the cottages would remain in the immediate family, that it would remain primarily a rental business, and that family would have first refusal if any cottages were sold. The same year, Tecundwide Management Group was formed. Owned by Jane and Alger, Bill and Lynn continued to work as the property managers. Alger died in July of 1986, and Bill and Lynn purchased the management company the following January. That's when the Masons invited seasonal and other long-standing renters to join us at Tecundawai. We invite you and your family to enjoy this beautiful setting with us and take a permanent share of all that is Tecundawai. Between 1987 and 1988, 11 cottages were sold. Five cottages are still owned by the same families that purchased them over 30 years ago. The first plan to expand the cottage was approved in 1987, but it was never built. Soon after, another plan for a second story for cottage number eight was approved, but also never built. The first addition to be built was cottage number 20. By 2018, over half of the cottages have a second floor. Bill and Lynn bought the family home in 1992, and Jane continued to live there until her death in 1994. Today, individual Mason family members own 11 of the 32 properties and have welcomed 21 new members. Association members meet annually to discuss improvements. They named the driveways after the Iroquois tribes, expanded the gardens, replaced a playground, planted trees, replaced and lit the flagpole, added a water filtration system and a community septic system, and replaced a boathouse. One of the highest priorities has always been protecting the lake's water quality. In keeping with its original mission, about one-third of the cottages are still rented to guests each year. Some of those families have been coming to Tecundawide since the 70s. Families can still experience a summer vacation on one of the cleanest lakes in the Adirondacks just the way my parents first imagined. Over the years, we have upgraded, improved, and expanded the cottages. At the same time, many have been winterized, and Tecundawide now offers accommodations throughout the year. The management group has a dedicated staff who have helped to care for the grounds and homes all of my siblings and children and many of my in-laws, nieces, and nephews have worked here and helped to make this property what it is today. My grandfather, Howard Mason, published his memories in Backward Glances. Those volumes, along with family records and photographs, tell the history of this beautiful place we call home. From the beginning, it has been our family's pleasure to be your hosts and our honor to serve as stewards of this property to protect it and keep it for future generations. Music